Hi, I'm Dr. Krupka. On this video, I'm going to be talking about the physiology of fat. So let's get into it and talk about what's going on with fat in our bodies and what it actually does to us. Originally, we thought adipose tissue or fat tissue was just inert storage for excess calories. We didn't think it did anything other than act as a box that held a bunch of extra calories. The simple equation of calories in versus calories out was widely accepted, and the implications of fat placement on the body, where it was on our body, was fairly poorly understood, but everything has changed. Our adipocytes, or our fat cells, produce several different hormones that influence our appetite, our hormone production, our metabolic rate, and our disease risk. Now, some of those hormones that we're going to talk about here are leptin, adiponectin, ASP, IL-6, PAI-1, and TNF-alpha. Now, I know that sounds like alphabet soup, but we're going to make sense of it for you here. First of all, leptin decreases our appetite, increases insulin sensitivity. Both of those are good things. It also, as our adiposity increases or as we get larger, our production of leptin increases. Now, that makes sense, right? As you put on more fat, it should decrease your appetite and give you a, a better ability to handle blood sugar and, and create energy in your body. So that looks like it makes perfect sense. However, the problem is, as we become, as we get larger and larger amounts of adipose tissue and we make more and more leptin, we become what's called leptin resistant, meaning our body starts to ignore um, the information that leptin gives us or the instructions that leptin gives us. And once we ignore that, we lose all of the positive benefits of leptin. So it's great up to a point, but as soon as you get too obese or carry too much fat tissue, you lose all the positive effects of leptin. So that's a problem. The next one is the adiponectin. Now, this again, it increases insulin sensitivity. It promotes increased metabolism, metabolism so it increases your metabolic rate. It promotes lean muscle mass and it's protective against cardiovascular disease. It lowers your blood sugar without using insulin, which those are all wonderful things. But the trouble is adiponectin production decreases as your fat mass increases. So as you put on more and more fat mass, you lose the ability to make the amount of adiponectin you need. So this means that over time, as you put on more fat mass, you become more insulin resistant, you gain fat, you raise your disease risks, and you slow your metabolism as you get more obese. None of those are things you want to do, right? You want to do exactly the opposite of that. ASP, or acylation stimulating protein, this increases triglyceride storage in fat cells. It increases VLDL production. Now, you're familiar with LDL as being the bad cholesterol. Well, this is a subfraction of LDL that's particularly sticky. Um, so it increases the production of that. Not a great thing. And ASP is increased by higher insulin levels. So eating high glycemic foods or sugary foods that raise your insulin levels, that will raise your ASP level and, and have the effects that we just talked about. Now, fat intake, because it does not increase your insulin levels, will not increase ASP. So considering that ASP is increased by insulin and not by fat, sugar is the enemy here, not fat. So, interesting point to, to keep in mind. Interleukin-6, or IL-6, this is a very powerful hormone. It crosses the blood-brain barrier. Not too many things do. Our body's very careful about maintaining a kind of a strict blood-brain barrier. It increases CRP, or C-reactive protein, which is a marker for inflammation. It generally promotes inflammatory changes throughout the body, and it's also associated with diabetes, atherosclerosis, SLE, or lupus, and prostate cancer. So IL-6 is kind of a nasty hormone that you don't want circulating in your bloodstream. Now, PAI-1, or plasminogen activating inhibitor 1, all right? I know it's a lot of words, but understand what it does. It inhibits two things. They're called TPA and UPA. They are normally used to break up clots. Now, these um, if you've had a family member or, or if you have gone into the hospital for a stroke and they gave you something called TPA to dissolve the stroke, this inhibits your body's natural TPA. 
So it keeps you from breaking down clots um, as they form in your bloodstream. It's linked to increased thrombosis. Thrombosis is having a clot that causes problems. It increases the risk of cardiovascular events. Now, inflammation, which is caused by the last couple hormones that we talked about, inflammation can increase your ability to make clots by depositing a molecule called fibrin into certain tissues in the body. So inflammation increases your ability to make clots, and PAI1 decreases your ability to break down those clots and get rid of them. So when you put those two hormones together, where you're making more clots and you have a decreased ability to break them down, your risk of cardiovascular events, including heart attacks and strokes, really just goes through the roof, right? It becomes a very dangerous situation. And this all increases as you put on more adipose tissue. Now, tumor necrosis factor alpha, or TNF-alpha, this increases inflammation, as many of these others have. It stimulates your HPA axis, which is the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, by releasing a hormone from the, from the hypothalamus to tell the pituitary what to do. If you want more information on the HPA axis and how it works, you can go to our adrenal physiology video, and we talk in some depth about the HPA axis. It also increases CRP, or C-reactive protein, uh, which is a marker for inflammation, and it promotes insulin resistance. Now, insulin resistance is that, that pre-diabetic syndrome X metabolic syndrome. It's got lots of different names, but it's where you stop reacting to insulin the way you're supposed to, so you start losing control of your blood sugar. All right? This is pre-type 2 diabetes, um, or all the way through full-blown type 2 diabetes. But the early stages of insulin resistance set you up for, for type 2 diabetes. So the takeaway from this is that adipocytes, or our fat cells, they make hormones. They don't just sit there and hold on to calories. They make leptin, they make adiponectin, they make ASP, IL-6, PAI-1, and tumor necrosis factor alpha. Some of these have beneficial effects and others do not. But as we get larger, the ones with beneficial effects are blunted and we don't get the full force of that and in some cases it reverses completely. And then the ones with detrimental effects tend to get stronger and stronger as we put on more adipose tissue. So no matter how you want to spin it, carrying excess fat is horrible for your health. All right, I've, I've had patients come in that are, that are you know, carrying lots of excess adipose tissue and they tell me, yeah, but so far I'm fine. I, I don't seem to have a problem with it. I can be healthy while I'm overweight. And to some degree, that's true, but only to a point. And the analogy I use, I happen to work in a six-story office building. If I were to go to the roof and jump off the roof of the building, jumping off the roof doesn't kill me. It doesn't even injure me. If I could press the pause button three stories down and have a conversation, I could make the point, look, I jumped off the roof. I fell down the side of the building. I, I didn't get hurt. I'm fine. But I'm going down a particular path, which at its end, has some predictable consequences, right? If I've jumped off the roof, halfway down, I'm still fine. By the time I get all the way down, I've got predictable problems. Well, being grossly overweight or carrying large amounts of excess adipose tissue has the same effect. You know you're going down a particular road. The same hormones that we just discussed in here are active in you, and they are working against your health. It's just a matter of how long can you hold on before these things actually have a detrimental effect that's cumulative enough that we can name the effect, okay? So you're not, you're not sick until you are, all right? So understand, this is not inert storage. By definition, as you carry more and more percentage of body fat, you will have more and more health risks and more and more health problems. So understand that if you're a patient of mine, come in and talk to me. You can go to functionalmedicine.org and find a functional medicine doctor near you. If you'd like to contact our office, here's our contact information. You can reach us on the website at drkrupka.com. Again, I've got a YouTube channel. I've got a blog. I've got a Facebook fan page. You can find me all over the place. But one way or another, get in touch with a functional medicine doctor. Get, get an assessment. Find out why you are you're gained the weight, why you have trouble losing it. Get those issues under control and get your weight down to a point or your adipose tissue down to a point where you are not subjected to the hormones that we talked about here today. All right? So thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video. Have a good day.